Neon white is the essence of speedrunning. Your goal is to get to the end of the level as fast as possible while killing all the demons along the path. Cards dot the intended trail, and each one gives you a gun that can be shot in the boring but normal way guns are, or can be discarded for a movement ability, ranging from a double jump, directional dash, or a grappling hook. All these are pretty basic in terms of first person platformers, but it's the way the game intrinsically encourages you to go fast through the medals. They are rewarded to you for finishing a level. Each of the medals unlocks something different. Bronze unlocks your friends times, and as you can see, I have no friends. Then you retry and get a silver, and that unlocks the ability to see a ghost of your previous run. Then you try to beat that ghost, and you get a gold, which unlocks that level hit. Another one down. So you see, the breadcrumb trail of cards is merely a ploy to slow you down. These hints let you break from the path and cut down your times by a wide margin and get the elusive ace medal. Hey Red, did you see that? And a supreme sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. Until you learn about the even more elusive red medal, which you get from being the time set by the developers. The visual style of the game leaves very little ambiguity in terms of how the levels are laid out, which can lead to you unintentionally getting an ace medal on your first try, if you have the skills. Even with the simpler style, some of the later missions can be pretty confusing in terms of their design. In between missions, you interact with the other characters in a visual novel, which is the most contentious aspect for reasons we'll get into. Each character has a relationship track to unlock funny dialogue and extra levels, so even if you don't care about the character development in these scenes, it's still worth doing for the bonus levels. To move relationships along, you need to find gifts in the stages. When you're playing the levels normally, you almost never have to think about what to do next. What I mean by this is that the card that you need to get past the obstacles will always be in your path. The gifts that you have to find are usually in extremely elaborate places. The disconnect between the normal level to level gameplay and the scavenger hunt that is getting the gifts leads to some stark pacing issues where you spend 10 to 15 minutes badassing through a level, then spend 25 to 30 slowly combing through the stage to find the present, then figuring out how to get it. It feels good to finally crack the code and get the present, but the journey is usually pretty excruciating. I mean, I just want to go fast. If you've been paying attention, I just talked about the gameplay first, because that's the best aspect of the game. Now for the story. So, about that cringe. Hey, White! Isn't it freaking crazy that John Cena is here in heaven giving us missions? What, are you telling me it gets worse? Uh. I said, is it White's flat ass? What have I gotten myself into? Stop thinking about it, White! Hot flesh ripped from bone, blood painting the landscape. Alright, I get it. I have a high tolerance for this stuff. I mean, I like Persona. Your job is to exterminate the demons that have invaded heaven as the titular amnesiac Neon White along with his group of assassin friends in a competition called the 10 Days of Judgment where the Neon that has the most kills gets to stay in heaven for one year. But it doesn't take long for Neon White and his buds to figure out that something's up with heaven like the fact that the angels are cats and the believers are assholes. This is Neon Green and he's been the winner of the competition for many years and has, well, how do I say it, gone completely insane. Through the aforementioned relationship, you learn more about White's relationship with his buddies, as well as his relationship to Green. This is where the majority of the cringe comes from, and I just gotta say, give me more. I'm a crusader for cringe. The voice actors deliver their lines with such a reverence that it's truly hard to hate it. I mean, I let out some mighty fine groans, but that doesn't mean that there isn't the occasional line that will catch you off guard. I think I get you. It's like how you can never be a true gamer if you only ever play on easy mode. I get that this sort of writing isn't for everyone, but god damn it, it is for me. So while the story is nothing crazy, it has its undeniable style that is sure to appeal to someone out there. So, just like the nature of the game, I'm about to speedrun an outro right now. Play Neon White. You will thank me later. Not bad for a dead guy, huh?